Hare Krishna. I'm feeling very blessed, honored and humbled to be here amongst all of you <clears throat> and to speak on Lord Ramachandra. How many of you have heard about Ramayan? Please raise your hand. So most of you, right? Let's stop the lecture here. I mean, you already know, right, about Ramayan? So what am I going to tell you? And in my Ramayana, it will not happen that Dashrath had four sons in your Ramayana, and my Ramayana, he will have eight sons. It will be the same, isn't it? Ramayana is very famous. So much so, that when Parikshit Maharaj was being spoken, Srimad Bhagavatam, by Shukadev Goswami, Shukadev Goswami says, Parikshit, you already know Ramayana. It's very famous. He already knew everything. So he said, I'm not going to speak much. He just in two chapters, he completed Ramayana. Whereas when Valmiki Muni, he writes Ramayana, he has to write 24,000 verses. And not only that, it is said, Charitam Raghunathasya Shatakoti Pravistaram Ekaikam Aksharam Pumsa Mahapataknashanam Says Lord Ram is not glorified just in 24,000 verses, but Shatakoti. Shatakoti means 100 crores, 1 billion. So Lord Shiva originally spoke Ramayan and he spoke in one billion verses, hundred crores. And then he thought, this is too much, what will I do with me? So he distributed it, 33 crores on the upper planetary system, 33 crores on the earthly planetary system and 33 crores to the lower planetary system. Still he had one crore with him. Then he thought, this is also too much. So he distributed out of that 33 lakhs, 33 lakhs and 33 lakhs. He still had 1 lakh. And he thought, it is also too much. What will I do with that? So then he gave 333,000, 33,000, 33,000. He still had 1,000. He distributed 333, 333, 333. Now he had only 1. Out of that, he just took one word. And he called it the essence of Ramayana. Anyone knows what was that one word? Ram, thank you. Was this a difficult question? <laughs> One time I was having a quiz and I was asking some questions on, based on Ramayana. So they were finding it very difficult. These are two difficult questions. I said, should I ask the simple one? I said, yes. I said, okay, tell me what is the name of Ramachandra? And they started scratching their head. So, and started, oh, oh. Then I said, don't you know? He said, no. I said, Lord Ram, <laughs> what's the big deal? <laughs> when you ask something simple, people get bewildered, isn't it? So Ramayana is very famous. And, uh, but because it is very famous, many people take advantage of it. They give their own interpretation, their own commentaries. There are commentaries on Ramayana where Lord Ram is not considered as a person. Can you imagine? We have such beautiful form of Lord Ramachandra. And people giving commentary, they don't consider him as a person. They consider him as Nirakar, impersonal form. And he said, that Nirakar appears, comes as form, takes a form, material form called Rama. That is why if we have to understand Ramayan Mahabharat, we should first read Srila Prabhupada's books. In the light of Prabhupada's books, when we try to understand Ramayana Mahabharata, it becomes very clear to us, who is Lord Ram? Why he came here? Why he performed the activities? So that is why, before beginning the Ramakatha today, let us offer our gratitude and our prayers to Srila Prabhupada that he should shower his mercy upon us so that we can understand the purport of Ramayana. In the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 
Śrīla Prabhupāda writes that Mahābhārata and Ramayana are part, part of Vedic history. And he said, better than reading them, we should hear and explain. Shravana and Kirtan. So he said, that is important. So that is what we are doing. We are following Prabhupāda's instruction. I am hearing, you are explaining. Is that right? Did I make any mistake in saying something? So I am explaining and you are hearing. And I hope you will hear attentively. Please be attentive because generally after the lecture, I conduct a small quiz. <laughs> just to see whether you are attentive or not. So although it is famous, there are a lot of commentaries we should stick to parampara. Padma Puran says, Sampradaya vihinaste mantra nishvala mataha. If you are not connected to a sampradaya, a disciplic succession, you may be chanting mantra. You may be even chanting Hare Krishna Mahavantra. But if you are not connected to a parampara, you are not connected to a disciplic succession, then whatever you are chanting will not give you the real fruit. What is the real fruit of chanting? When we are chanting the holy name, the real fruit is not to get some money, not to get some power, not to just even go away from birth, death, old age and disease. The real fruit is to obtain love of Krishna. Bhakti is actually a path of love. Ramayan is a love story. Right? We are going to present to you as a love story. How many of you like love stories? No, none of you? All of you, right? All of you write love stories. So Ramayana is a love story because it revives the love which is dormant in all of us and that is the purpose of hearing Ramayana. Let us revive that love. Let us revive that connection to the Supreme Lord. All our activities should be directed for that. Very nicely in Srimad Bhagavatam, Mother Devahuti says, Neha yat karma dharmaya na viragaya kalpate na tirtha pada sevaya jivan api mritohi saha. If you are following any activity, you are doing some activities, Neha yat karma dharmaya and your activities are not leading you to dharma, by the way, dharma means not ordinary religion. Prabhupada explains that the word religion is not actually explaining the meaning of dharma. That's why Prabhupada says occupational duties. So, if your activities are not leading you to dharma, neha yat karma dharmaya na viragaya kalpate and your dharma is not leading to renunciation in your heart, you're still attached, you're still continuing to do whatever you, you were doing 100 years ago, 10 years ago, 50 years ago. And if you are not, if that renunciation is not leading to the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then whatever you are doing is just a waste of our time. So let us not waste our time in this world. Hear Ramayan. So Ramayan is a love story. Ramayan is a is revival of our connection to the Supreme. And Ramayan is a search for someone, someone very close to us who has lost somewhere. For example, if one of your family member, very close family member, um, is lost somewhere, you're not able to find, will you be happy? Even though you may have all the facilities but you'll always be thinking about, like, you know, in Indian movies earlier we used to see that two brothers were there and there was a fair, Mela, and then, you know, they got lost, <laughs> right? And then after 20 years they sing some song and they come together. <laughs> Do you remember seeing like that? Yes? Movies were like that, right? So you, then afterwards they'll sing the song and you said, oh, this song I was hearing, so he's my brother. 
Similarly, we have lost our connection to Krishna, to the Supreme Personality, Lord Ramachandra. And that is why we are also singing the song. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So like in the olden movies, you know, just by singing the song, they used to revive. Yes. So by Ram Katha, we are trying to revive our relationship or we are trying to find the person who's very close to us, Suhridam. Right next to our heart, he's just sitting here. Right? No one is as close as Krishna. No one is as close as Lord Ramachandra. So by hearing Ram Katha, we are trying to search, we are trying to find that person. At the same time, Ram Katha is like an armor, kavach. Armor is something which protects us when you are fighting. So it protects you. Ram Katha is like an armor. When you hear continuously, it makes you so strong that all the attacks which you you will face in the world, whether in terms of diseases, whether in terms of difficulties, whether in terms of reversals, but you'll have an armor. You'll always be peaceful. Bhakti doesn't mean that if you perform bhakti, no problems will come into your life. You will not die. Is that your idea of bhakti? That I'm doing bhakti so I should not die. And if I'm dying, then I will not do bhakti. The idea is that we perform bhakti to be peaceful in all condition, to be thankful to Krishna. Lord Brahma very nicely puts it. Tatte nukampam susamikshamano bhunjane vatmakritam vipakam he says a person becomes liberated or the liberation becomes right of that person who, who just thanks the Lord in every situation. Tad anukampa, whatever it is, it's your mercy my Lord. How can we think like that? When you are happy, yes, it is mercy, my Lord. But when there are troubles in the life, do we say, it's mercy, my Lord? One time, Srila Prabhupada's, one of Srila Prabhupada's disciples was, he was preparing bhoga for the Lord, cutting vegetables. And while cutting, his finger got cut. And he came to Prabhupada. He said, Prabhupada, I was preparing bhoga for the Lord. Why is it that my finger got cut? Prabhupada said, as per your karma, your head was to be chopped off. <laughs> Just because you are serving the Lord, only your finger got cut. This is called Tatte Nukampam Susamik Shamano. Always be thankful to Krishna. Always be thankful to Lord Ramachandra. Whatever you have given us. The problem is, we go on asking. We just have to change. How long will you go on asking? Start thanking the Lord. Thank Him for everything. How many times do we thank Him that, Lord, you have given me two hands? We don't, right? We just take it casually. How many times we thank Him for the eyes? I can see you. I can have your beautiful darshan. Thank you, Lord. So start thanking the Lord. This is devotion. Attitude of gratitude is what is called bhakti or devotion. So let us begin this Ramakatha and we would like to pay our obeisances to Lord Ramachandra. Please repeat after me if you can this uh, uh, prayers. Ramam Ramanujam Sita Bharatam Bharata Nujam 
सुग्रीवं वायु सुनम च प्रणमामी पुनः पुनः we pay our obeisances to lord ramachandra shrimati sita devi the brothers of lord ram lakshman bharat and shatrugna his very dear friend shri sugriv and his devotee the son of vayu hanuman ji we pay our obeisances again and again so ramayan is very as i was mentioning famous not just in india and by the way ramayan is not just which happened in treta yuga which we know ramayan has been happening again and again lord ram was being worshiped even before he appeared shila prabhupada explains this morning we were reading that uh, there was a deity of lord ram and sita which was being worshiped by ikshvaku and then it came down from there continued the worship till lord ram appeared in that dynasty and when lord ram appeared it was very odd for him to see his worship being done so he said no no keep this deity inside so he kept it in his bedroom he said i don't want this all to happen and then there was a brahmana who was really devoted to lord ram and then the deity was given even to the present day the deity is in south part of india called udupi there is a nice temple ashtamatha established by madhvacharya in one of the mathas that deity is still there and the name of the deity they call is mool rama or mool rama means original ram and the deity even today the altar is made of gold small altar and it is in the shape of a locket so it is said that this was worn by hanuman ji so he used to carry this ram deity with him and it is still there that locket which was being worn by hanuman ji so it has been there ramachand lord ram's worship has been happening and lord ram has appeared many times it is not that he appeared only this time and every time when he appears there is some change in the past time like it is said one time Lord Ramachandra went to China to kill Ravan. He was in the form of a dragon that time. So he went there to kill him. Uh, China people worship dragon even today, right? <laughs> so Lord Ramachandra so it it keeps changing these past times. So and it is not just in India in various places many places this uh, story of lord ramachandra is famous like if you talk about sanskrit there is valmiki ramayan from which we'll be going we'll be speaking there is adhyatma ramayan there is yoga vashishth written by vashishth muni there is a ramayan by agatsya muni and in hindi there is ramayan by tulsidas in bengali there is kirti vas in tamil there is kam kam ramayan like this ramayan is very famous and and outside also there is a malaysian version it's called hikayat seri ram in malaysia also uh, this is very famous in that it is it is mentioned that dashrath is grandson of adam and ravan got boon from allah so that's okay <laughs> that's their version so it's called hikayat seri ram then there is a thai version in thailand also there is a uh, ramayan called ramakeen or ramakirti in that there is a nice description it says that actually sita was daughter of ravan have you heard this any time yes so the thai version says this that sita was daughter of ravan and when she was born vibhishan was a great astrologer so he looked at the chart and he said this girl will be the will be the cause of your death and ravan hearing of the death you know ravan was thinking no one can kill me so he said when he heard this that she will be the cause of my death he just threw her in the water and then finally she came to the land and 
was found by Janak Maharaj. This is the version in Thailand. In Cambodia, <coughs> you have a Ramayana. In Persia, you have Ramayana. In Persian language, the Ramayana is Dastane Ram. And that's Ramayana. Okay. And then also in uh, Nepal, there is Adarsh Raghav. So like that, Ramayana, lot of versions of Ramayana are there. And, uh, but the, the original Ramayana is Valmiki Ramayana. That is considered to be Adi Kavya. When we talk about Valmiki, Valmiki is compared to a, to a mountain and from which the <coughs> river of Ramayana is coming. Valmiki Giri Sambhuta Ram Sagar Gamini Punati Bhuvanam Punya Ramayan Mahanadi so Ramayana is compared to Ganga. Ganga flows in all the three worlds, like upper planetary systems, middle and lower. In upper planetary system, Ganga is called Mandakini. Here on the earth, Ganga is called Bhagirathi. And lower planet, she is called Bhogavati. So Ganga flows in all the three planets. Similarly, Ramayana, it can purify the three existence of the living entity. What are the three existence? We have gross body, we have subtle body, and we have the soul. So Ramayana purifies your gross body. That means when you hear Ramayana, your senses are being purified. You're hearing, you're watching. Senses are being purified. And subtle body, your mind. When you are hearing these, these are transcendental words. Just by hearing them, your mind will be purified. This is the power of the words of scriptures. And third existence is soul. As we hear Ramayan, the soul gets purified and ready to love Krishna. Actually, we do everything with the Lord except loving. We ask the Lord, we come to the Lord, Oh Lord, please give me something. Or we come out of the fear, if I don't go to the temple, my business will not run properly. So let me go to the temple. Right? So we come out of fear, we come out of desire, or sometime out of sense of duty. But very few people who come to Krishna just out of love. I'm coming to you because I love you, that's all. Right? How will you feel if you are a very rich man and people are coming to you just because you have money? Hmm? Will you be happy? And people are coming just to ask, can I get this, can I get this? This is what happened. Krishna is standing here and everyone is coming with a long list. Right? Please do this, please, please give that. So it purifies so this is Ramayana which purifies us on a three existence level. And that is why we should read Ramayana. So beginning of Ramayana, we have some difference in Adhyatma Ramayana, Valmiki Ramayana. Let's begin with Valmiki Ramayana. Then I will let you know what, how it started in Adhyatma Ramayana. That also is a very wonderful narration in Adhyatma Ramayana. So Valmiki Ramayan, one time Valmiki Rishi, he was sitting in his hermitage and Narad Muni came. So he asked Narad Muni, I want to know that is there a person right now in this planet earth who has no faults in him? Who never sees anyone with, with envy? with greed, who is equal to everyone, who loves everyone and everyone loves him. Now this is in present world impossible. <laughs> right? To have a person who loves everyone and everyone loves him. Who doesn't see any faults in others. So when he asked this, Narad Muni said, yes, there is one person, Ramachandra. That time Lord Ramachandra was ruling. 
he ruled for 11000 years in this world lord ramachandra right his father ruled for 60000 years now you may be wondering what is this 11000 60000 here here if you become 60 then alarm starts ringing right <laughs> and then you're on the bonus after that 60000 year this was different age we are talking of treta yuga where people could live so long and and lot of things we are going to hear lot of things in this uh, ram katha which you may not have heard for example um i don't know whether you heard or know how many queens dashrath maharaj had any of you hmm Three, four, ah, three hundred. See, so much confusion here. <laughs> Started with three and up to gone up to three hundred. Anyone else? Three hundred, three hundred sixty-five. Very nice. Anyone else wants to try here? I don't know. Dashrath Maharaj must be thinking, what is this going on? <laughs> well he, he had 353 wives so you were very close right 353 have you heard any time we only heard about three three were principal queens called pataranis but 353 queens why very important reason do you want to hear why he had 353 wives okay sorry ah very nice so the the uh, you know who is the culprit not dashrath it's parshuram parshuram was killing all the kshatriyas right and whenever he used to come and he had taken uh, his he was following a rule parshuram that i'll kill all the kshatriyas so he used to go to kill but if the kshatriya has married then he said i will not kill him for one year He was just now got married, and I'll kill him. It's not nice for the wife. So he said, "I will not, ma- I'll not kill the person who has just married for one year." So he used to come to kill Dashrath, and Dashrath knew, okay, Parshuram is coming. He used to get married. <laughs> <laughs> so then, you know, Parshuram will come, and he said, "Oh, welcome, welcome, my wife. <laughs> oh, you got married just now? Yes. Okay, I'll come next year. Thank you." and so he was coming next year and he'll get married again <laughs> so like this he married 353 queens that's why one of the names of dashrath is nari kavach kavach means armor nari means woman so he made women as armor so that parshuram couldn't kill him finally i think parshuram must have got fed up he said <laughs> just live like that so so these are the things many things we are going to hear like this like lord ramachandra's sister how many sisters he had okay we when we'll come to it i'll explain you let's not let's not start the quiz <clears throat> so so valmiki muni was hearing from narad muni and narad muni explained everything about lord ramachandra in brief you can say like we have chatur shloki bhagavad gita bhagavad gita in four verses we have bhagavatam only in four verses chatur shloki bhagavatam like this this was given ramayana in few verses he explained who's ram what he did etc and hearing this valmiki muni was really amazed and wanted to know more so he went to take bath in the river and uh, Uh, he told one of his disciples get get the things for me to take bath and he was just taking around and he saw uh, two birds were enjoying cranes they were enjoying and suddenly uh, he saw uh, an arrow came and shot one of them and the bird was dead so he didn't like it he said what's that the two birds were just you know enjoying with each other exchanging love and this person is shot so he immediately cursed him he said 
मनिषाद प्रतिष्ठा मम गाश्वती सम यत्क्रौचम मिथुनादेक अग्दि काम मोहित इस दीज टू बर्ड्स वेर एंजॉइंग एंड यू हैव किल दैम यू विल नेवर बी पीसफुल मानिषाद प्रतिष्ठा मम तम गता शाश्वती सम शाश्वती मीन्स इटर्नली यू विल नॉट बी पीसफुल बट वेन ही सेट दिस ही वॉज ही वॉज थिंकिंग वाई डिड आई कर्स आई मीन दैट्स द you know hunters have this duty they, they go on doing it why am i supposed to curse and a sage means he should not curse he should not get angry the quality of the sage is he doesn't get angry but sometimes we have seen prabhupad also getting angry have you seen any time prabhupad getting angry any of you here seniors prabhupad says that anger is there even in liberated stage but that anger is only if there is obstruction in the service of the lord not for own self so a sage he never gets angry in general there are a lot of things of course we should not try to judge you know now i'm saying in tomorrow if you see any of the devotees getting angry and you say yesterday we heard you are not a sadhu right it doesn't happen like that prabhupad was here i think in london and uh, <clears throat> one time some mosquitoes were there and devotees were there a proper had no problem you know because being from india mosquito is not a problem for us we are used to live with living with mosquitoes so then the devotee says prabhupad it seems that mosquitoes do not bite pure devotee and proper said they may be making distinction here in london but in calcutta they don't make distinction <laughs> so uh anyway so that's how the sage should be so then it started and uh, he cursed them and he was not very happy so he came back and brahma ji came and brahma ji said i want you to write 24000 verses of ramayan and that is why you curse actually that is the first shloka of ramayan so then he started after that he started writing this is the beginning in adhyatma ramayan there is a very nice beginning parvati ji is asking question to lord shiva and what was her question she said how to consider lord ram as supreme personality he doesn't even know where is his wife isn't it she was seeing lord ram was performing past time and he was looking for sita ha sita ha sita where is sita so parvati said what kind of supreme personality of god it is this at least he should know where is his wife apart from other things so her question was very nice she asked a question in a very humble way she said i know lord ram is a well built boat to cross over this material ocean and at the same time i also know that bhakti devotion is the only way to cross this ocean of birth and death very nicely she puts it bhakti prasiddh bhav mokshanaya na anya tat sadhanam asti kinchit she said bhakti is the only way devotion is the only way to go out of this material world no other means for us to go out but then she said how to consider him the supreme lord sometimes we also get bewildered right seeing the activities of the lord krishna is enjoying with gopis what is this going on you know what kind of god is he so sometimes people are not able to understand so then shiva uh, explained to parvati very nicely there is there are few chapters in which he explained it is called shri ram hridayam where he explained that how supreme lord is beyond all these doubts he says we are not able to understand the lord because we have ego there's no problem with the lord we have ego have you seen any time a paper boat in the childhood we used to make this paper boat and you know do it on the water so the paper boat is only there for some time but when it is floating it feels that i'm doing i'm very great our life is like that mm. what do we have anything can be taken away from us any time if you really want to be happy 
three things always keep in mind first thing everything belongs to krishna right or wrong we feel that maybe you know everything belongs everything and then we have a line there except my house except my bank balance except everything belongs to krishna right sab kuch tera kuch nahi mera jay jagdish hare tar so first thing we should understand everything belongs to krishna <laughs> bhakti vinod thakur writes very nicely a bhajan vastu tas kalitav jive ke ho na aham mam bhrami bhrami bhoge shok bhai she said he says vastuta in actual actual thing if you see vastuta sakalita everything belongs to you or krishna jive ke ho na hai the living entity doesn't have anything but aham mam me and mine so in this we are you know entangled aham mam bhrami bhrami and that is why we have to have lamentation and fear so first thing which you have to remember is everything belongs to are you sure thank you second he has given it to us for some particular purpose so whatever you have you have your talent you have your intelligence you have your wealth you have your popularity anything which you have received he has given it for a purpose and third and very important thing he can take it away any time right we forget all these three things we forget that everything belongs to krishna prabhupad when he was leaving his body you can see in that video that final lesson prabhupad is just lying and there is microphone and and prabhupad says everything belongs to krishna one who understands this is krishna conscious so please always remember everything belongs to krishna has given us for some purpose and can take away any time he can take away our life also any time right so that is why we should become serious in devotion we should not take devotion lightly or we should not take devotion as a satvic entertainment right sometimes we take devotion as satvic entertainment okay outside also people in the disco they are dancing and singing and when you come here the same thing goes on right the world is a jumping and dancing and keep doing kirtan so we feel yeah let's spend some time no be serious in devotion we have very less time and in that less time we have to achieve krishna so <clears throat> uh, this is what you should remember so then ramayan begins he starts writing and then he uh, after writing he wanted it to be told to people so he explained this to or <clears throat> two two young boys love and kush love and kush are sons of lord ramachandra so they as sages they started going to the streets of ayodhya and started singing ramayan <laughs> so when the people of ayodhya heard oh two boys two young boys are singing and about our king lord ram so they were very happy and the news reached lord ramachandra that okay there are two boys who are singing your glories so he said call them so then he called the assembly you know he was sitting lord ramachandra all his brothers all his you know teachers and everyone and he said now we will hear katha so you see lord ramachandra also likes to hear about him so why we should not hear <laughs> he loves hearing so he sat down he stopped all the thing he said now we sit hear ram katha so now we are going to hear ram katha before that i just would like to tell you what mood you should have when you are hearing ram katha right so that you develop proper mood there is a nice uh, <clears throat> there was a king called king kulashekhar we have a book called mukund mala stotra right by prabhupad he has translated about 6 of the verses so mukundamala stotra is by king kulishekhar so this king very great devotee when he was a king he used to hear ramayan he was very fond of hearing ramayan so he used to call brahmanas and just keep hearing ramayan and how he used to hear 
that i will tell you one or two incidents and then you should develop the same mood okay so he was hearing ramayan the past time came the brahmana started speaking that lord ram is in janasthan janasthan when he went uh, with sita and uh, lakshman 14000 uh, demons attacked him so then he was hearing this that lord ram is there and 14000 demons are attacking and then he heard lord ram is alone he's going to fight them alone 14000 demons he got up from his seat the king everyone thought what happened king said prepare the army and people were looking what happened i mean we are hearing ram katha and why to prepare the army he said prepare the army so where are we going we are going to protect lord ram and the ministers were looking what ram i mean this is you know 900000 years ago that happened and what's happening he said no we are going to protect how i am here and how anyone can attack lord ramachandra so army was prepared and he started going now nobody know nobody knew where we are going you know we, king said we are going and they, everyone is going so minister was you know he had to do something so he called two soldiers told them something and sent them so the soldier went from the other side quickly and then started coming from the opposite side from where this army was going and the king was leading the army i'm going to protect i'm going to support lord ramachandra so then these two soldiers came and he looked at them yes what have you what is the news he said the news is that lord ramachandra has killed all the 14000 demons and he is safe oh he is killed yes he is safe yes come on we'll go back and hear gram katha <laughs> so this is the mood right this is the mood of hearing that how we should get absorbed don't think about all other things get absorbed in the past time of krishna and the past time of lord ramachandra uh, that is the mood we should develop so when parvati asked this question that all the bhakti is the only way but why how to understand and then he explained and then parvati developed a desire to hear more she got eagerness she said i want to hear more this eagerness has to be developed for hearing we hear so many things shukadev goswami says shruta vyadini rajendra nidam santi sahasrasha apashyatam atmatatvam he says people have so much to hear like the newspaper every day and the internet is full of things we just want to go on reading. but we should hear katha krishna katha so then um, parvati said i would like to hear more i am not satisfied this is a symptom of a person who's really absorbed in hearing he is not satisfied this is what the sages when they were sitting in nemi sharanya 88000 sages they were sitting and they were just hearing they just wanted to hear and they told ki go on we are, we are not we, we it's not that we are tired even parikshit he was hearing for 7 days and uh, shukadev goswami thought he is a king doesn't have habit of sitting i am i am a sage i have okay i can go on speaking but he doesn't have habit so he was thinking like that and at a point parikshit thought that shukadev goswami is thinking like that so he said don't worry i'm not feeling hungry i'm not feeling thirsty i'm not feeling sleepy please go on speaking about krishna so for 7 days he did not eat he did not sleep he did not drink he was just hearing katha that's absorption so lord ramachandra's stories <coughs> are like that in padma purana it is mentioned that uh, manu and shatrupa they manu is taking birth as dashrath as vasudev and as hari gupta who is hari gupta he is the father of kalki by the way kalki is about not yet arrived it's not incarnated <laughs> of course in india everything india is a very fertile land so every nook and corner you get a lord every day you know some some incarnation appears and foolish people 
they accept him also even maybe today there may be two three kalkis and it's always there india always has this right one time it so happened in one part south india there were three kalkis at a time all three claiming i am kalki can you imagine and the tv channel the tv people are very expert you know so they called all three of them without telling them that we are calling the other one so they called and kept them in different rooms so they were thinking oh i'm going to be on tv i'm going to tell and then they when they on the show the show was live and then they brought all three together and they all started fighting i am original kalki i am original kalki and people were thinking what kind of god is he who has to fight to say that he is god <laughs> so sometimes people are like that you know we get fooled and that is why prabhupad has given us clarity what we get from prabhupad books is clarity who is god what you are supposed to do is very clear so hari gopt is going to come as father of uh, kalki incarnation you know <laughs> just when i hear when i'm remembering about kalki there are so many other thing one time a person was claiming himself to be kalki so people filed a case against him so he was brought to the court judge was a devotee so he was very angry you know this person says that he is incarnation of krishna so he asked him are you incarnation of krishna he said yes he said okay speak bhagavad gita but you are incarnation you should know bhagavad gita like that so now he was also expert he said not in this incarnation <laughs> he didn't know you know verses of bhagavad gita what can he do so you know such people are there who claim themselves to be god prabhupada used to say god god if somebody is claiming what is he dog thank you prabhu dog dog right so we don't have to be you know very much you know, attracted by such cheap publicity god is god right you don't have to pay 5000 dollars to see god right so then uh, he will appear that's what is mentioned in uh, padma puran that how he will appear so adhyatma ramayan beginning we heard we heard from valmiki ramayan and how padma puran also mentions about uh, appearance of lord ram chandra we also heard what is ram katha so now <clears throat> hearing as i was saying in ramayan various places um there are symptoms of intelligent person given who is intelligent person the first symptom is that he likes to hear inclination to hear so don't think intelligent person do not hear <laughs> only speak inclination to hear capacity to hear ability to comprehend you know you, you should have the capacity to hear mm. inclination is there but you don't have capacity right i'm seeing most of you are just you know thinking when will 9 o'clock and then i can leave right and then you are thinking maybe next time it should be only half an hour and then some of them are thinking this person goes on speaking you know he doesn't stop what you know at least right capacity to hear right how many of you are thinking like that i know no one will raise hand because <laughs> it'll it'll be little odd <clears throat> but i'll tell you i can read your minds i have that power so what's going on in your mind i can understand and that is why i'm telling you don't worry it's only 15 20 minutes remaining <laughs> so capacity to hear inclination to hear and then what you hear you can memorize remain in your memory that is intelligence because it is you know when you sit in the temple hall you hear and you said wow very nice and then you go out and you meet someone he said where were you i was in manner oh what were you doing i was hearing a lecture oh wow how was it wonderful is it yeah wonderful what was it that i don't remember but it's wonderful so wonderful lecture is which you don't remember at all <laughs> so so this is this is the symptom or 
<coughs> or attributes of an intelligent person. So then Bha Ma Ramayana starts the history of Dasharat Maharaj. There was a great king called Anshuman. Sagar, Sagar Maharaj's grandson Anshuman. And Anshuman's son was Dilip, Maharaj Dilip. So Anshuman, Dilip and Bhagirath, three generations, they performed austerity penances just to bring Ganga to this earth. And successful was Bhagirath. Bhagirath. So that's why Ganga is known as Bhagirathi. We will, when we come to that pastime of Sagar Maharaj, I, if, if we are able to, I don't know in these three, four days up to where we can reach. But when we come to that, we'll see that, you know, Anshuman tried to bring Ganga, he failed. Then Dilip Maharaj, his son, he failed. Bhagirath, finally he was successful. Ganga said, okay, I'll come down. But he said, you know, when I'll come down from the heavenly planets, it'll be with such a force. You need someone to, you know, hold me. So he said, who? He said, ask Lord Shiva. So then again for one year he was uh, performing austerity to please Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva was pleased. Shiva is very quickly pleased. You know, Shiva is like this. Ashutosh. Ashutosh means quickly he gets satisfied. You know how quickly? One time in a temple, you know in Shiva temple you have shivaling, right? People offer water and then how many of you go to, uh, not go to, how many of you seen Shiva temple? Any of you? We have Shiva temple here? Somewhere? So then you see there is a pot where, you know, the water or the milk keeps dripping, right? Always on Shiva. So one time, a thief went to the uh, temple of Lord Shiva. And he was looking around, he wanted to steal something, so he saw that pot, golden pot. So he tried, but his hand was not reaching. He looked around, there were no chairs. You know, maybe it was not an Iskon temple. Iskon temple, we have everything ready, chairs, everything. So, so then uh, he thought what to do. So he climbed on shivling. So he climbed on that. And then he was trying to take that pot out. As he was doing that, Lord Shiva appeared to him. And he was scared. You can imagine he's trying to steal and Lord Shiva appears. And Lord Shiva says, I'm very happy with you. Now the thief was thinking, what, you're happy with me? He said, why? He said, people come here. They offer some leaf. They offer some flowers. They offer some fruit. I'm very happy with you. You have offered yourself to me. <laughs> so he was very happy. So this is Lord Shiva. You know, Ashutosh. He gets satisfied, very happy. So then Shiva was satisfied in one year time. And then Bhagirath said, okay, now ready. So then Ganga. And Ganga and Shiva are related and the Suganga thought, let me have some fun with Shiva. So she thought, I will come with such a force that I will take Shiva also down. And Shiva is Sarvagya. Sarvagya means his quality is he knows everything. This quality is not in Brahma also. Sh Shiva has five extra qualities which are not in Brahma also. That's why Shiva is actually greater than Brahma. But he comes from Brahma, but he has five extra qualities. So Shiva knows everything. So Shiva understood. Shiva said, okay, let me see. So what he did, uh, Ganga came down and Shiva held her in, her in his hair. That's all. So Ganga came. So Bhagirath is waiting. Okay, Ganga came. He saw Ganga coming and then he saw Ganga going. <laughs> because Ganga just, you know, he took a, to the Shiva took in the hairs. You see, when you've seen picture of Shiva, you see, um, you know, the Ganga there. So then again, he had to perform austerity for one year to please Shiva. Please, I want Ganga to be here. So finally, Shiva was pleased and then he, you know, released Ganga. And when he was taking Ganga, Bhagirath Maharaj had to take Ganga to a particular place. So when he was taking, so they came to a um, hermitage of a Muni. So he, Ganga was passing from there. So this Muni was there. And uh, Muni's name was Janhu Muni. Janhu. So she came and then the entire place of his was filled with water. So he got angry. He, he drank entire Ganga. 
Now Bhagirath was like again, what's happening? You know, first she was doing it, now he's doing. So he prayed. So from his ear, he released Ganga. That is why Ganga is known as daughter of Janurishi, Janavi. That's her name. So, <clears throat> so anyway, Dilip and Bhagirath, and then finally, later in their generations, it came Khatwang Maharaj, and then Dirgbahu and Raghu. Raghu was a very famous person. Right? We say Raghu Kulareeta Sada Chali Aai, Prana Jai Par Vachan Na Jai. So Raghu and Raghu's son was Aja and Aja's son was Dashrath Maharaj. Now Dashrath Maharaj had a desire. He wanted a son. He had one daughter. Dashrath and Kaushalya had a daughter named Shanta. That's elder sister of Lord Ramachandra. So when she was born, there was a king next to the kingdom of Dashrath Maharaj. His name was Romapad. So he had a son, but he didn't have a daughter. So he was looking, he, he wanted a daughter. Whereas Dashrath wanted a son because he wanted to perform his duty of giving the next king to the citizens. So then he, he gave the daughter to King Romapad. So when I was reading this, I was just feeling that this is material world, right? Nobody is satisfied, right? If you have a daughter, you need a son. If you have a son, you need a daughter. If you don't have children, you need children. If you have children, you send them to hostel. Isn't it? Nobody is satisfied, right? Or uh, if you are living in a small village in India, people want to come to the cities like Mumbai and Delhi. Those who are staying in Mumbai and Delhi want to come to London. Those who are in London wants to go where? New York, New York City. Uh, and those who are in New York wants to go to the moon. <laughs> Nobody is satisfied, right? Wherever you are, you're not satisfied. So this is the nature of the world. And what does Bhakti teaches us? To be satisfied in what you have. And be grateful to Krishna and be satisfied and just serve. So anyway, Dashrath Maharaj had this desire. And uh, <clears throat> there is a nice story I would like to say. See, some, um, when we talk about the scriptures, so there are some stories which are from the scriptures. They are bona fide, like we are speaking from Ramayana. But then there are some stories called Lok Katha. They are famous. They may not be from scriptural point of view. They may not be from any scriptures. But they are just like, you know, when you go to Vrindavan, you hear a lot of Krishna Kathas, which are not there in Bhagavatam. But locally people speak. So like that, locally, there is a story. It's not in Ramayana or anywhere. But very nice story. So when Dashrath Maharaj was... Uh, he was looking, he was yearning for a son he didn't have. So and at that time, uh, some sages were talking. That we have heard that Dashrath will perform a sacrifice. And then he will have four sons. Not just one, two, three, four sons. And the eldest of them will be the supreme personality. So when they were speaking, Jatayu was sitting on, on that tree. And he heard this. And Jatayu was friend of Dashrath. So he came to Dashrath. And he saw Dashrath lamenting, Oh, I don't have a son. He said, Dashrath, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you a way by which you will have four sons, not just one. But you'll have to promise one thing to me. So Dashrath said, what? He said, you will have to give me your eldest son. If you are okay, then I will tell you what you should do. So Dashrath thought, anyway, I don't have even one. If I get four, I just have to give one. So he agreed, okay, no problem. The eldest one, I'll, I'm giving it to you. So then he said, okay. So whatever he had heard, he told Dashrath, you perform a yagya like this and etc. etc. So then yagya was performed. Four children were born. We're going to hear about that. Maybe tomorrow, how Lord Ramachandra... In fact, it should have been today, being the Ramanaumi. But anyway, maybe we'll reach tomorrow. Uh, that's also very nice uh, description, how Lord Rama was born. And uh, 
gives lot of instructions to us so tomorrow when we talk about lord ramachandra's birth we are going to speak lot of uh, there will be lot of instructions on how to raise children ramayana speaks a lot about it so so they, then he said okay i will give so children were born and obviously when lord ramachandra was born lakshman bharat shatrugan he was so attached dashrath maharaj so then after some time he heard jatayu that okay children are born and he didn't tell me so he came so he told dashrath do you remember your promise dashrath said what promise said are you told me yeah, you are going to give me a lesson he said no way <laughs> he was so attached right so attached to lord ram see this is this is the attachment you can imagine you get attached to your own child who's not the supreme personality isn't it you're so attached even during the lecture if your child starts creating some problem he starts dancing and you feel very happy you don't see others are getting disturbed and when he is dancing in your house you feel so happy you make videos and upload and see my So just imagine if the supreme personality of Godhead is dancing, you know. That's why the bhajan is written: Thumak chalat Ram Chandra, Bajat Panjaniya. So, so if that is happening, what what happiness a person will get in whose house supreme personality of Godhead is dancing, small boy. So the Shrut was so attached. He said, "No way, I cannot give." So then this argument was going on, and Lord Ramachandra came, small boy, and he said, "What happened?" He said, "Your father promised, and he's not fulfilling the promise." Ramachandra said, "Impossible." Ragukul reet sada chali aay, pran jai par vachan na jai. We can give our life, but we can never break the promise. How is it? Tell me what my father said. So he told the whole story. So he said, "Okay." I promise that I am your son from now. I will not be his son. So then he asked, but tell me one thing: When is the time when the father needs the son most? When is the son needed? Just I thought about it and he said to perform the last rites. He said, I promise when you'll die, I'll be there to perform the last rites. But when he'll die, I'll not be there. And we know that is what happened. When Jatayu died. he he gave up his life on the lap of lord ramachandra and ramachandra performed his last rites but when dashrath died ramachandra was not there right so anyway this this is also a nice connection with jatayu so dashrath maharaj was lamenting but there was a <coughs> prediction done by lord brahma vishnu manush roope na bhavishyanti raghukule Ragukule means in the dynasty of Ragu, Vishnu will come as an ordinary person. You see, Valmiki Ramayan projects Lord Ram as an ordinary person, and that is why Lord Ram is looking for Sita. He doesn't know what happened. You know, otherwise, if he projects as a supreme personality of Godhead, what will happen in Ramayan? Sita will say, "Oh, please go and get that golden deer," and Ram will say, "Okay, I'm going." Ravan will come. <laughs> because he knows everything right so then there won't be any excitement right so that is why he doesn't know he is looking so he has been he has been shown as an ordinary person who doesn't know anything he has to ask even while killing ravan he was asking how to kill him i'm killing and the, you know his heads are i'm uh, coming up again and again so he has been but at few places he couldn't hide that he is the supreme personality like jatayu when he performed the last rite of jatayu he told Ra- uh, lakshman i have delivered him from this material world so who can say like that <laughs> the supreme personality so uh, so it was a prediction and uh, now dashrath wanted to have the son sumantra told him sumantra is a minister and a friend also so he told him that i have heard in the past that you will perform a sacrifice but to perform this sacrifice you need a person who has never seen a woman in his life till he got married is it possible <laughs> 
He said, you need to have that. He said, who's that person? So that person is Rishi Shringi. It's a very nice story how Rishi Shringi, Rishi Shringi got married to Shanta, the daughter of Dasharath. So that's why Rishi Shringi was supposed to come to perform sacrifice. And how he came to King Romapad's kingdom, I'll quickly tell you. We have only two, three minutes before the curtain opens. So it's a very interesting story. The father of Rishi Shringi was keeping him, you know, protected, won't allow him to go anywhere. And this Rishi Shringi had not seen in his life any women. He was just staying in that ashram in the jungle with his father, that's all. So then in King Rompad's kingdom, there was a drought. And they said, if you bring him, then rains will come. He said, okay, to bring him. He said, not possible, his father will not allow him. His father is, you know, he'll burn the whole kingdom if he gets angry. So then how to bring? He said, send women. He has not seen women. He will see them and he'll come. So then beautiful women were sent. Now you just imagine, first time he's seeing women, he thought they are sages. So he said, you are very beautiful sages. <laughs> because he saw them for the first time. And then he was eating you know, whatever you get in the forest, roots and etc. So they prepared very nice dishes for him. Rasagulla, gulab jamun, rasmalai, whatever, right? You know? We all know that is the way to the heart, right? So if you have to kill, I'm um, oh, sorry, not kill, if you have to, <laughs> if you have to control someone, I'm sorry, control someone, it's a very easy way, just prepare nice dishes and so they made and then they offered him. He thought these are fruits. He said, I've never tasted fruits like this. What are this? He said, in our kingdom, there are many fruits like that. So if you want, please come. And he said, okay. But he said, come when your father is not there. <laughs> so that's how he was brought to the kingdom uh, of Romapad. And then when father came to know, he was very angry and he came there. He was standing at the gate of the kingdom ready to burn the whole kingdom and king came to know what to do now. So he was advised, take your <coughs> son-in-law and your daughter and tell, tell him now they are married. So he brought them and they paid obeisances and somebody is paying obeisances. Even if a person is angry, what he does? He blesses them. So he blessed them and then they got up. Who are you? <laughs> My son. What happened? I got married to her. Then he, he said, okay, now what can be done? So that's how he came. And tomorrow we are going to hear, very nice continuation, how Lord, uh, how Dashrath approached Rishi Shringi, and then he had uh, the sacrifice. And we will speak about the birth of Lord Ramachandra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Rama.